after several years of running small block Chevys and basically breaking just about every record there was, we went after the ultimate goal and um, thought we had a good program going, uh, 640 cubic inch, big block Chevy. Our engine builder was confident. We were confident. And as things turned out, we spent the best part of six years beating our head against the wall and just one failure after another and um, for various reasons too, you know. It's not an easy deal trying to run 425. Some people seem to do it easier than others. We, we were struggling, <clears throat> pardon me, and um, 2010 came along and it just seemed like all the moons lined up and one day we made four, three 400 mile an hour passes, just like magic. <laughs> of course, I know exactly what happened that day prior to that day we made five failed attempts, five in a row. And it was this continuation of what had been going on years earlier. And um, so we went back to the pits and made a major change and um, come out. And it was like, wow, what have we been doing for five years before that? Uh, it was an incredible feat. And I was elated along with the crew and Mike and everybody involved. The car was magic. Drove as good as we thought it would at 400. Mike was especially happy, comfortable in the car. So after 2010, we just felt like, yeah, we're there. We finally broke that 400 mile an hour barrier. Go home and uh, engine builder Tommy can tune this thing up and we'll come back and maybe finally realize our goal. 2011 came around and it was um, probably the most disastrous year we've ever put in out there. Car ran half a mile and it was junk. And um, since then we've been doing lots and lots of soul searching and um, trying to figure out what, why, when, and where. <clears throat> and it finally, my son Jeff explained the equation of insanity to me. And that's when you continually do the same thing time after time after time after time with the same results, nothing. So we've made a soul-searching change we're building a, a big, hemi, nitro-burning, double throw-down bad deal. <laughs> uh, we've, we've talked with <clears throat> all the gurus that run nitro-burning hemis. Uh, starting with Al Teague, he was the first guy I called. And uh, he's always been a hero. And that's what Al ran back in his day was a hemi, but it, totally different configuration than what we're going to do. Al was running the old school stuff. Uh, God bless him, he went fast with it, 409. And uh, from Al, we talked to our friends, Strasburg family down in Linden, Utah, and they were quite helpful. We talked to Jim Rizzoli, who's a drag racing Hemi guru. And after I talked to several people, one name kept coming up as the guy, and that's Jerry Darian out in Azusa, California. And I've never met Jerry face to face yet. We will pretty quick. He's got a bunch of my money now. <laughs> but we've decided on a, to be legal in uh, Class 11 under FIA. It has to be over 500 cubic inches. Um, now this thing will be 564 
cubic inches, probably running 50% nitro. Best calculations is it should give us somewhere around 2,500 horsepower, which is definitely more than that big Chevy ever made. Um, this Hemi is probably a little, it's a little more reasonable than the big block Chevy was initially going in. Uh, who knows what the maintenance is going to be on the car. Uh, I hear a lot of horror stories. You watch them drag races and them guys blow them things up every run. <laughs> the advantage we got is this is naturally aspirated. It isn't blown. Um, we're not running 98% nitro. I think this, uh, and Jerry Darien feels the same way. The thing will be kind of running on cruise control. Turning 8,000. These engines turn 9.5 at the drag strip. Uh, if we can turn it 78.8, it's going to be magic. Uh, everything says this thing should fly, you know. Interesting fact, uh, we're actually running it with no water, same as they do at the drags. And initially I said, oh, no way. No way that can happen. But every person I, I talked with says, Terry, don't, don't mess around with using water to cool it. The fuel will kill it, cool it. Starting with Danny, uh, Freddie Dannenfelser, Don Ferguson, Jim Rizzoli, Jerry Darian, the Strasburgs, everybody says the same thing. Don't need it. I, it's still a concept that I have a hard time getting in my head, but uh, interesting. So that's new. So we can throw out the radiator, get rid of the, all the plumbing. Uh, might have to build a little bigger fuel tank. I don't know. 22 gallons might not get us six miles down the road, but uh, assuming we get done for Speed Week and we can use Speed Week, We'll have the Hemi in it for Speed Week. And we'll use Speed Week just to, for uh, some dyno runs. Get it and find out if we really got a 400 mile an hour deal or not. Um, that's the plan. Jerry Darian says he thinks he can have that engine done for us uh, by the end of May. I'll give us June, July to get it in, plumbed. All the, it's, we're really cutting it close. Headers, all the extra work. Uh, but that's the plan. Uh, like I said earlier, it's a learning curve. Um, but we're all looking forward to it. We're all old dogs, but we're not too old to learn new tricks. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're confident that it's going to work, knowing that there's going to be some teething problems, some new things we got to do. One thing, we've never had access through the bottom of the body to look at, to pull the oil pan off. So BJ and Jimmy Berkdahl is coming down Friday <clears throat> and look, we're going to cut a door in the bottom of the body so we can at least raise the car up and pull the pan and look at the bearings at the, at the racetrack. Some things that we've never been able to do in the past. So. And that's a definite must with the, that nitro burning Hemi. So it'll be fun. Um, and if we don't succeed, guess what? We got nobody to blame but ourselves. And uh, if we do, one for us. <laughs> <laughs>